Hey guys, Mark Boswell here from Boswell Emergency Medical. Hey, so I told you I was going to give you guys some feedback on that blood gas question we had the other day. Um, I got a lot of different answers and a lot of different feedback on that question. So I want to um, take a few, just a minute or two to kind of explain it better for you. I know I put the answer up there earlier this evening, so you should have that to look through. But I'm just going to explain it in person a bit more. And for those that might need a little more explanation, you'll really understand what's going on here. So basically the question gives you a patient scenario with nothing but blood gases and it asks you what's the next intervention or the correct intervention or however you want to phrase that. Um, so you're kind of limited. You don't really know the patient backstory. You don't know the vital signs. You don't know their symptoms. You don't know their history. You don't know what brought them to this place there with these blood gases. So you're giving these blood gases and just review for you. I'm looking at my notes here. The pH was 7.25. The CO2 was 28. The bicarb was 12. That's all you got, these blood gases. You don't know what else is going on. So, the, and then you look at the answers, and your answers are some different interventions. You got give insulin, uh, decrease the respiratory rate on the ventilator, so we're assuming this patient's ventilated. Uh, we can give an IV fluid bolus or give some Lasix. So, you know, right away your mind is looking at these blood gases and thinking, man, I kind of think I know what's going on here just based upon things I see commonly and things like that. But, because this is trying to replicate the, a real valid exam, a certification exam, I try to make it as close to those principles or the philosophy as, as they might give to you. So in this case, to answer it correctly, you do need to take the time and identify the disorder. Because you're, you know, a lot of times blood gas questions just give you numbers and you answer it with what is the disorder. Now we're asking you for a treatment. So you need to fill in that middle step, which is you need to identify the disorder so you know how you're going to answer with the correct intervention. So looking at the numbers, pH of 7.25, we know that's acidotic, it's on the low end. We look at the CO2, that's 28, the normal range being 35 to 45, so 28 is really low. This patient has gotten rid of their CO2 for whatever reason, um, they're in a state, uh, because of that low CO2, and remember CO2 is an acid, so you've taken away some of the acid, the CO2 component is actually would actually be more related to an alkaline condition. So it doesn't appear that the CO2 is part of the primary problem for this patient. Look at the bicarb of 12, that's way low, right? So they've lost their alkaline content. They lost their bicarb, it's low, that leaves them more acidotic. So looking at our three parameters, which, which parameter, which system is responsible for the pH being acidotic? In this case, it's the bicarb, because the bicarb is low, and that's driving the pH in a low direction. Well, what about the CO2? Well, the CO2 is low, but because the CO2 is low, that's making it lean more alkaline. So actually, what we're seeing here is the CO2, or the respiratory component, is attempting to compensate for the metabolic problem. So the underlying problem here is a metabolic acidosis, and we're seeing some partial compensation by the respiratory system, okay? Why is it partial? because the pH is still abnormal. If it were fully compensated, the numbers would be going the same direction, but the exception would be the pH would be back within that normal range of 735 to 45. So now we've identified it as a metabolic acidosis. What, what metabolic acidosis conditions come to mind easily or frequently to you guys? Obviously, DKA is a common one that a lot of people think of, and that's easy to remember because it's diabetic ketoacidosis. We know sepsis causes a lactic acidosis to build up. We know hypoperfusion of the tissues causes an acidotic type state, like in a resuscitation or a bad code, those type of things. Other things we know that um, I, I really harp on this in the class, salicylates and tricyclics. Overdoses of those cause a profound metabolic acidosis. So we've got many different possible etiologies for these blood gases, okay? So we need to consider what's a possible intervention or what's the best intervention? Well, at the top of the list there you see give insulin, which if you knew it was a DKA, that would definitely be something you want to do. Yes, one poster did talk about, you know, you want to get fluids first and DKA. That's true, but if you knew it was DKA, your most specific treatment would be to give the insulin. However, for this scenario I've given you, you don't know what condition it is. You don't know that they're diabetic. You don't know it's a trauma or resuscitation. You don't know that they're septic. You don't have those clues to go with that. So you answer this question by going with only what's given to you in the stem, which is nothing but these numbers. 
you need to pick the answer which is most universally applicable to a metabolic acidosis. And when you look at the gamut of all the possible conditions and the common ones, an IV fluid bolus is going to be most useful for most of those patients. It will help you with your DKA. It will help you with your hypoperfusion. It will help you with your sepsis, with that distributive type shock you're having with, dis with your sepsis, etc. So the way you answer this question is you go with what answers the question best based only on the information you're given in the question stem. So in this case, the IV fluid bolus is your best answer. The other ones, decreasing the respiratory rate. Hey, if we, if we, if we hypoventilated this patient, we would actually be offsetting their compensation ability and we would probably kill them or make them worse at least. So if anything, a possible answer for this would be to increase the respiration rate, but that's not given as an option. So decreasing the respiratory rate is not the correct answer and it's actually a, a wrong answer. Lasix, well, you could really you know, think yourself through a pathway here talking about how they may be in such florid CHF, they're not ventilating, things like that, and they're kind of getting hypoperfused. But again, it's like the insulin. You're not given enough information to know that CHF is the etiology for these blood gas numbers. That's the same reason you're not picking the insulin. So the best answer for this question is what is the most universal fix based on these numbers, which is an IV fluid bolus, okay? Hope that makes sense for you guys. Um, please feel free to add any comments or give feedback if you if you like that or found it useful. Again, I'm always trying to put stuff in as close to a real testing perspective as I can for you to make it more realistic, okay? Thanks for listening and um, keep up with the page. There'll be more stuff coming soon. Been on a little hiatus lately with some things going on, but um, we'll get back in the swing of things really soon. All right, be in touch. Thanks, guys. Bye.